Um, yeah, so I'm Jeremy Trower. I've been in Regina, Saskatchewan for eight years and oh, or I guess, sorry, um, seven years, almost eight years, coming up in eight years. I keep aging myself because I look forward to um, uh, the next anniversary so much every year. So it's always like, oh, it's already the eighth year. Um, so we're coming up on seventh, then we'll be eight. Um, but I've been on the Employee Technical Services or ETS team, which is a relatively newer team, but um, some people might remember it as um, internal systems and ITSS. Um, I've been on with them in Regina and um, yeah. I'll start. I, I I'll start just by uh, asking, like, how has ETS changed with the COVID stuff? Like, um, what kinds of things are you doing more of, and what are you doing less of? Um. Yeah, that's a great question, Evan. Um, we've really been we've we've had to definitely adapt. I think like so many teams, um, both inside of Icometrics, but also outside of Icometrics, um, as a whole. But when what I mean by that is, um, we've we've had to really take an initiative on um, what re remote working from home means for IT, um, IT security, um, and continuing um, the, the creating great experiences um, across the board. Um, and how do we do that when, you know, the computers aren't able to connect to a network. Um, those were some of the challenges that we were faced with and our team quickly had to come together, um, hurdle our heads and, and figure out how are we gonna, um, you know, continue to keep these computers updated? How are we gonna continue to um, remediate issues um, with, with end users if um, you know, they're not able to connect to the internet, if we physically can't get our hands on the devices um, and there's that barrier there. Um, so it's definitely coming to, to figure out and the best way to optimize and efficiency um, the way that we develop those practices and then in, engage with the users. Um, I think, and I, ho I hope the, the experience for them um, hasn't changed, but um, we tried to, I guess, mold the way that we interact with them on a personal level in face-to-face -face interactions um, with end users. And that's really, you. It's, it's, it's much different than it might seem. It might seem easy just to say, oh, now you're just talking to them over um, the phone or over over face-to-face -face FaceTime like this. Um, but it's actually, it's actually a lot different and a lot more um, interesting to engage with users, um, not negatively, but also de just different in that in that sense. Have you changed practices that uh, will remain changed uh, if life gets back to normal? You guys learn some things that you're going to carry on. I think so. I think so. I think um, with. IT security and the a lot of initiatives that we've taken on, um, both just learning and um, you know starting to investigate implementation. Um, we're definitely those are going to carry on well into the future, many many years into the future. Um, and a lot of those were spurred, I think, out of the need um, for securing our employees better and ensuring they have security not just only at the office but also you know when they're roaming um, the globe wherever you know being locked down at home or um, if this you know opens up in the next five 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 years you know traveling abroad again um, so. Uh, so so you said you've been here for uh, um, seven almost eight Coming years. Up on seven, seven years almost oh, seven oh, years six oh, years almost seven Looking, years. yeah yeah uh, uh, how do you describe your journey what like uh, i'm thinking about like your discovery of iq metrics or your you, joining iq metrics to where you are now what's it what are the things that stand out for you yeah that's um that's a really great question um I th it's been i i i want to say um the the easy the easy the easy answer is is uh is um fun but i mean it's been definitely this adventure of a roller coaster um that well i mean all all roller coasters have ups and downs it's been like almost three-dimensional where it has like sideways and 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 ways that you never thought um would be possible or that you would even be interested and in. you learn stuff about yourself um one perfect example is um going the 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 IQ um, give backs and the IQ getaway trips, um, traveling was something to me that like wasn't really something that was done in the, f the family. So just being able to experience that, um, but only, not only just by, by that as an individual, but with a group has completely shaped the way I think, um, just for myself, I'm speaking, um, the way that I view traveling in the world and other cultures and wanting to 
um, really, you know, get involved with learning about them because that was just something where, you know, I've never left home. So all I know is um, the culture here and, and the way of life that we, you know, you know, that I lived here going to McDonald's drive throughs and um, um, camping on, on the beaches of uh, North Shore, Oahu is definitely um, an interesting time for, for me. And um, not only that, just getting to interact with people on the way that you do um, in IQ metrics is not like your corporate job. Like I, I, talk with my mom every day um, and she's a government employee and she loves her job but it's definitely not the same um, that you get working at IQ metrics and that was something that I didn't anticipate coming in and it's something that keeps you for the long run that's for sure <laughs> well, well I, I should probably say that um, you are an essential part of my trip experience I always look to you to see like how much someone can enjoy and marvel the trips that we go on. So thanks for that. It's pretty good. Yeah, anytime, Evan. I always look forward to them and interacting with everyone. I try my best to at least give give as much people as possible a minute of my time because that's the other thing. It's it's not just um, it's not just about me and my time. It's about um, hearing other people's experience and it, and that's something that's really growing on me um, and that I've come to learn and respect and love about um, the culture of Ikeometrics and something that I think Ikeometrics brings out the better in people. At least I, I like to believe that. <laughs> so I, I, I want to talk a little bit about um, the unique, uh, very personal sort of relationship that uh, you end up having with people in their computers and, and like what, uh, what that's like. I, I, my, my hypothesis is, is that while you're, fantastic at the um, technical know-how and keeping our uh, machines up uh, alive. Uh, it's actually a very uh, personable interaction you're having with all these individuals too. What's it like for you to, inter like what are the keys when you're interacting with someone uh, uh, about their own machine? What, how come you're so good at it? Yeah, that's uh, that's a great, that's an interesting question. Um, I never really thought about it like that. Um, you kind of just get used to the way that I guess you would want to take care of your computer. And I mean, um, everyone's a little bit different, but I think our team at, at ETS has come together as a whole and kind of have a really good idea um, of what, you know, the ideal um, computer setup is both running, you know, fast, um, efficiently, um, keeping it updated and stuff like that. Um, so we've kind of, have this vision or this, this, this idea. Um, and, you know, it would be the way that we would want it to be for ourselves. So I think when we get our hands on a computer, you know, um, it's, it's really interesting just to experience it because everyone uses their computer differently. Um, and that's something that you learn really fast and that we've kind of had to mold into our, our model, um, so to speak. And I think that it's, it's being flexible and then also the ability of like, um, um, knowing knowing that it's uh, it's both unique, but also you want to make sure that it's it's state of the art. And I think that's a a word that we've used here and there in ETS. But um, um, at the same time, so it's like um, the best way I could describe it is is you would want it to be as good as it would be for you. So that's why you want to make sure that they're running up and quick, um, and you know kind of how the machines work, what softwares are on them, um, and you kind of want to sway users to use. Um, better softwares than the lessers um, and definitely hear their side of the argument because um, we're both learning together. But at the same time, you also respect that their kind of configurations and some of the things that they want to do um, while they don't impose security threats, they're definitely um, make their lives easier. Um, so we definitely want to permit those. And I think that's why we give some of the users the flexibility of installing some of their own softwares. Um, and I think versus, you know, some other computers, um, their companies, sorry, uh, don't don't have that flexibility. So I think just doing that as a whole um, definitely gives everyone the flexibility, and then us the flexibility to to do that. If that makes sense, if if I'm conveying my ideas as well as I'd like to. <laughs> oh, oh, I think so. I mean, I mean, if I just echo <laughs> back a little bit, um, uh, I believe that you guys have a, a lot of responsibilities for stability and consistency and. and um, sort of uh, y to help us collaborate, but also like we very um, 
uh, much value the autonomy and the independence of people doing it how they want and to figure out how to do that uh, to, to strike that balance. Uh, wh where's the the future of ETS? Like, wh are there trends or um, areas of growth for you or for the entire ETS team? Um, yeah, I think I think um, if you talk to, uh, depending who you talk to, um, global domination is definitely um, up on the totem pole. But I think no, the the learning, the learning and the development, we definitely um, that's something that that I've, I've loved about Icometrics is they both, um, both Icometrics and the ETS team, but um, is that they encourage you to learn and grow. And that's something that ETS that we do constantly, at least it seems like it. Um, and, and we're encouraged to do it um, in the areas that we want to grow um, and, and find value. Um, so a lot of us are, are recently taking up security um, training in, in our passive time um, and, and advanced networking training. Um, and some people are taking up other training, stuff like that. But we're collectively doing it and then sharing our experiences with each other. And I think there's so much more value in that. Um, even if you're not directly learning what the other person is learning, just getting those tidbits of information. And while you're going to have someone who eventually potentially becomes an SME um, in that role, you're shedding that knowledge as it's being received onto the other team members. And we do that collectively all day, every day. Um, and that's something that, that's just, um, it's, it's invaluable. There's a, um, I can't tell you the, the potential that's unlocked when, you know, you, sh you share an article and all of a sudden there is an in-depth conversation going for an hour. Um, three people learn something that they never knew before. You've optimized this one service and, you know, you move on to the day and then you think that these only happen once in a blue moon, but they happen, they seem to happen every other day. And it's just like, that's, um, that's something that we do, but then also directly doing it as a skill set, you know, and in, in networking and actually setting up time to get course um, courseware set and, and develop those skills is something um, that, that's highly high valuable. I, I think I just want to um, um, have us benefit from the experience you guys are having and sharing. I think it's a great uh, sort of example others can consider. I um, presume you share articles and stuff through Slack. Do you guys have um, any practices or, or best uh, success stories in terms of how people share more in-depth stuff? Like if somebody goes through a course, how do they share it? Um, that's, yeah, and I think we're, we're definitely, because we're doing that more so uh, as of lately, um, within the last year to two years, um, we're definitely getting better at doing that. Um, and that's a hard, hard thing to do initially. It was more just paste this, this blurb of this knowledge um, that you've received. And now it's actually curating wiki articles, um, both from an internal perspective, um, ones that, you know, maybe don't need to be publicized to all employees just because the, the value isn't, isn't there for all, or, or the, the information isn't, isn't there um, structurally. But um, what I mean by that is, is we, we've started to just structure it better um, and, and started to really release that information. And, and I think about a year ago, um, we, we started to release some IT security training videos and that was a, a, a basic um, an example of taking some of that knowledge and then putting it out there and, and I think you're going to see that coming out more often um, not not just from ETS but I think um, there's going to be there's going to be a lot of that but it, it's really just um, trying to figure out the best way to do it so some people do zoom videos um, some people do so you'll just hop on a zoom schedule the zoom we'll record it and then we'll just archive that um, internally in a, in a shared folder or something like that um, or doing a wiki article um, slideshows there, there's many ways to do it and it's really um, up to I think the user that that's sharing the information to kind of discover the best way that fits for them um, and that's what's really great about it that is uh very fascinating. I mean, nobody has it perfect how we how we share, no. but it's neat to watch you guys uh, trying that out and uh, I'm sharing that. Hey, I I want to thank you for your time, Jeremy. I uh, you are a fascinating guy, and uh, I always have a big smile on my face after I chat with you. So I really appreciate your time and sharing this with everybody. Yeah, definitely. No, thank you, Nevin, um, for giving me this uh, opportunity to speak with you. It was great, and uh, I would be more than glad to do it again.